to bail out corporations and use it to invest in communities um, and, and provide like things like solar and public transportation um, and you know um, other other forms of alternative energy, um, green green food, um, you know I don't know home gardens and all the, all that sort of stuff that they've been denied of. Um, it's it's so important. Um, and also to provide them with new jobs, like say if they're working in the fossil fuel industry, we need to provide them with a just transition um, to jobs in clean energy um, so that they're not like losing jobs um, while we're tackling the climate crisis so that they can actually help us uh, make our new economy better, um, better than it was. Um, and then to touch on what Julia said, um, I think I, I totally missed this when I was talking, but it's so important to recognize that like veganism is not accessible um, to, you know, low-income minority people because like um it's just but like, they're they're denied these resources like there are these things they're like food deserts um basically like there's like one supermarket in this entire whole town and like um and it's expensive and maybe they can't pay for it or maybe they can't walk other places and the food selection is kind of low um so you know they're they're not able to you know get the kind of food they want um and that's just another example of you know corporations and, and billionaires and the one percent um i just slapped something um taking advantage of us um and and of low income communities, I'm not, I'm not low income. I won't try to deny it. I have privilege. Um, and I want to, you know, I want to make sure others actually get to experience that privilege and, and don't have to like, you know, search for food and buy things that they don't want to. And then they actually have access to healthy food and not just all that processed crap that they sell in the supermarkets. Um, they have access to whole healthy um, growing food. Maybe they have the opportunity to grow food in their backyards. Um, and, you know, making sure that everyone has access to that kind of food so that we can, we can all transition sustainably. Um, and yeah, I'm sorry for talking so much. Yeah, I think that's definitely true. And we've seen the climate crisis infiltrate itself into a lot of different issues from, you know, racial inequality to our infrastructure, to youth activism, to Black Lives Matter, and especially in light of the recent protests and the rise in publicity about killings of African Americans. We've seen that often these communities are not only targeted by police, they're also targeted by our government because the government doesn't care as much about them and they give them less opportunities. So for our next question, we're just gonna to touch on it for about five minutes and then we're gonna go into a Q&A session. So the next question is basically, so what can I do to be a climate activism, a climate activist? So if I care about, for example, if I care about feminism, what can I do to get myself more involved Uh, Harmony, you cut out there. I think you're muted. Uh, we can't hear you. It's sorry, I you keep like glitching out. What'd you say? What part did I cut out at? Oh, you're okay. Um, maybe just say the whole thing again. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was just gonna say, so it's really important to see like in light of the recent protests and the higher amount of publicity and killings of unarmed African Americans, we've seen that not only do our police officers not care about African American people, not only do a lot of citizens not care about African American people, but our government also does not give them as much of an opportunity like Jens was talking about in our infrastructure. And then like Julie said, in our education, and like Audrey said, in our food supply. So the next question we're just going to touch on for just a few minutes and then we'll go into a Q&A session. So what are some actions that I can take to be a climate activist? I can go for this one. Um, I think first I like probably should acknowledge that like I'm a person definitely with loads of privilege to be able to call myself like someone who works for like environmentalism since the reality is that not everyone has like the time to dedicate to volunteer work or striking or even has the money to shop for like sustainable clothing or sh like eat vegetarian or vegan. Um, and I think it's important to recognize that that doesn't make people like less of a climate activist. Um, and if anything, it, it it increases the responsibility that like people with privilege ha have to being climate advocates um, themselves. Uh, so for me, I think there are sort of two categories of things you can do to affect any sort of social change ever, but especially climate change. Um, I mean, like change against climate change. Um, you can either work within the system that already exists, like the system of governance that we, governance that we have, um, and you could work 
sort of grassroots uh, to change the system itself. Um, and these are definitely related and there are organizations that certainly do both. Um, I think the Sunrise Movement is a, is a good example of an organization that does both. Uh, but when I look at our political system, I think we need incremental change right now, but ultimately bold systematic change if we want to survive. Uh, so I think the various organizations and activities I'm part of represent those and hopefully give you some ideas if you're looking to get involved. Um, so firstly, I do like work within the structure of that we have in this country uh, to pass policy and elect leaders who fight for climate justice. So for example, with NJ Student Climate Advocates, I am working um, on a policy that I believe will decrease carbon emissions in my state. Um, and I'm also interning uh, this summer for a congressional candidate who supports the Green New Deal. So these are both examples of like ways you can work with politics that were given um, to enact change. Um, and then on the other hand, I don't think movements like the one for climate justice can survive without powerful grassroots, people-led groups organizing on the ground for change. Um, so one example of that is uh, for Redefy, our whole strategy is to organize hundreds of reps and staff writers and chapters in schools and communities to make local change. Um, also, you know, attending climate strikes and showing up to protests is definitely a part of that as well. Um, so yeah, I think there's a lot you can do, but I would probably recommend joining organizations or campaigns or coalitions near you who you know are doing the work. I think that's a good place to start. Okay, I guess I'll add on to that. Um, like, I just want to say, um, before I get into all of the little nitty-gritty things that you can do, um, like, this is a huge issue, and there are so many ways that you can plug in, like, all areas. You can, um, you know, work in climate justice and environmental justice in vulnerable communities. You can, you know, fight against, um, like, the big corporations. You can fight for diet change. You can fight for systemic change. You can work for, you know, people who are going to champion policies like, um, not, I shouldn't say policies, plans like the Green New Deal. Um, and Medicare for all that are going to put people first um, instead of like profits and and the one percent um, like there there is so much you can do in so many ways to plug in so even if you don't you know hear something that I say that sounds like you just know that like there are so many other things you can do um, to help out um, and we really really need you um, so you know I, I the first thing I want to talk about is um, organizations um, like there are so many different organizations out there if you're in New Jersey um, which all of us are in New Jersey um, we've got an overload of New Jersey people in here. Um, there is New Jersey Youth for Climate Action. Um, you know, we, you should come join us. We're pretty cool. Um, we do um, climate strikes. Obviously, we're not striking right now because we're in a pandemic. Um, and, you know, we're also fighting to get, you know, Green New Deal champions elected. So if you want to work with us, um, we'll have some links after this slide. Um, and then there are other New Jersey organizations. Um, I guess there's the New Jersey Student Climate Advocates, and then there are other um, local groups and if you there are always going to be local groups in your areas if you like find any groups um, you know go for it go join them um, the sunrise movement is you know a huge movement that I'm, I'm really really involved in um, so if you are interested in joining us we're, we're a movement of young people you know fighting for good jobs and a little future um, we advocate for the green new deal we're trying to get green new deal champions elected to congress um, people's champions who will you know fight for us instead of um, fighting for um, you know corporations and billionaires um, the greedy few. Um, they have hubs all over the country. Um, so if you're not in New Jersey, um, you know, there's probably a hub near you if you live in a big city. Um, and even if not, you know, there might be rural hubs. I, I run a rural hub. <laughs> no one knows where Hunter County is, but we have a hub there. So, you know, pretty cool. Um, so there's also going to be a link on the next slide to, um, you know, find a Sunrise Hub. I'll also drop it in the chat um, right now if I can find the chat. Um, it's sunrisemovement.org. Um, slash hubs is where you can find all of the information for your local hubs. It'll have contact information, all that. Um, you know, I think a big thing, um, you know, outside of organizations that, you know, um, has really changed the game for the climate movement recently is, is striking. And obviously we can't do that right now, but I think it's so important to like go out on strike. Um, you know, we can change the system from within, but we also have to show that like, you know, we're done with the system. Um, like the system hasn't been working for us. Um, and we need action now, and it, it's it's too late for like it's too late for us to just sit around and do nothing. It's too late for us to have incremental change. We need 
you know, drastic action right now. And I think climate striking, if you can, is a great way to get out there and show your support for that. Obviously, be safe. If you're going to do it now, social distance, please wear your masks. And, um, you know, hopefully this pandemic will blow over soon, crossing fingers. Um, you know, obviously, and then there are also, um, as opposed from like, you know, the societal stuff, like, you know, working for to pass the Green New Deal. Um, also, I want to actually touch on now, um, you know, helping Green New Deal champions get elected to Congress. This is one way you can change the system from inside um, is, you know, um, getting people elected to Congress who actually care. Um, and if you don't mind me asking, Julia, who are you interning for? Um, Harmony is also working on this campaign. It's Arthi Krivik. She's running. Oh, in guys, Park. I'm an intern fellow. Oh, really? Fellow. <laughs> it's a fellow. <laughs> You're a oh, fellow. I, I, I should know that. We're all fellows. Okay. Y'all are awesome. Yeah, Arty Krivik is. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, guys, if my you're life. interested in working for Arty Krivik, it's so great. It's a great campaign. I don't know. They're probably not doing people now since the elections in like seven days. But if she gets past the primary, then definitely, definitely apply to be a fellow because it's a really great opportunity. And you can yeah, still I, volunteer I, for the next week or so. I typed the link in the chat to volunteer. Y'all should definitely volunteer. Um, yeah, I will. I realize Harmony is getting mad at me because I'm talking too much. So I will hurry up. Um, and then on the individual side of things, um, you know, just doing everything you can to make your individual life less, um, less, you know, less, oh my God, I can't speak. Make yourself not contribute as much to climate change. Um, if you have the privilege to do that, if you have the, the means to do that, then please do it. Um, if you can afford to eat less meat and, you know, eat vegan, please do that. Um, it'll make such a huge difference. It'll really decrease your carbon footprint because, you know, um, making animal products, it, it demands so many resources. It's also really unethical to animals. Like, I don't know about you, but I really wouldn't want to be killed and have someone eat my body. That's not really a fun thing. Um, and also, you know, looking at your own actions and transportation, are you driving a car everywhere? Um, or are there public transportation options there are you that you can take? Um, are you using a lot of electricity in your house? Are you using a lot of water? Are you producing a lot of waste? Um, all those things are very, very, very small in the scheme of things, but, um, you know, I've been trying to make my life a little less, um, more waste-free, and it's, it's in me, you know, it does something, so, um, yeah, those are all the things I highly recommend, you know, joining organizations, um, fighting for a Green New Deal, fighting for Green New Deal champions to get elected to Congress. We have had so many progressive victories recently. I don't care about, um, Jamal Bowman, um, in New York, Jabari Brisport in New York, um, and guess what, guys, New Jersey's next, um, R.T. Krivik is next, Hector Osibera, Larry Ham, everyone in New Jersey. Um, but yeah, I'm done now. Uh, Harmony, I guess we can go to Q&A if we're short on time. Yeah, I was going to say, Julia and Jens, if you just want to say like maybe a minute of stuff really quick and then we can move into a Q&A session. So if people who have questions, if you want to start typing them in the chat while Julia and Jens just add a little quick bit, that would be great. I mean, I already gave like kind of a, a spiel. So I think Jen's if you want to go. Yeah, sounds good. So I think uh, Julia and Audrey really hit the main points. So uh, on the big picture scale. So I'll just touch upon um, some more uh, smaller, on a smaller scale, what you can do to be a climate advocate. So I think that um, it's definitely great to be involved in the great scale on a larger scale, but I think it's also good to immerse yourself into local issues. So I think oftentimes some people forget, like they think of like rising sea levels and uh, wildfires and droughts, for example, as some sort of um, some events out there in the ether, but recognizing that there are some local issues at stake um, when you recognize when you think about the climate crisis is good to not only educate yourself of why does and sorry to educate yourself about um, some ongoing issues within closer to home, but also to help other people recognize that the climate threat is not something that's like here 20 years from now. It's like it's already affecting us today and that in order to sort of not only convince them to get involved, but as well as um, educate them to, the, to uh, how extensive it is and how it affects your daily life is something that you can do um, on a smaller scale. And on a local level, that could involve, I guess, attending town halls, for example. Um, sometimes, I think right now, they actually have virtual town halls as well. So whether it be some of your local congressmen, maybe, or um, sometimes your mayors will also have meetings online and you can call in, or you can write a letter as well um, to, whoever, to your elected officials to make sure that they recognize that some of the issues that you're fighting for are um, worth considering as well as, um, to make sure that your voice is heard all together. And I'll, yeah, I'll put it there because we are short on time. Okay, so if anyone has any questions, you can just um, raise your hand. I think I can see that. Or you can just shout them out.
Come on, y'all, make me work. I gotta do something right here. So why did you all decide to get involved in the first place? That is a wonderful question. Um, I will start, I guess, um, since I'm the one who talked. Um, well, it's a long story. Um, I will, I will spare you the details. Um, but you know, I, I was, I, I went vegan at, in sixth grade because of animal rights. I didn't really know a whole lot about the climate crisis then, but um, I started to get involved. Um, started to learn more about the climate crisis and all of the issues. Um, fortunately, I, I was presented with a lot of information online. I think the fact that we have like social media right now is really helping a lot of people learn about the climate crisis um, and all of its impacts, which has done a world of wonders for um, the climate movement. Um, and actually the first tangible thing I ever did for climate change, well, well, I went to a climate strike in February um, when those um, global climate strikes started up. Um, I went in February and then there was one in um, March and April. Um, those were pretty awesome. And the first org I actually ever joined was um, the New Jersey Student Climate Advocates, um, all of us here. Um, so, you know, I was with them for a while, but then I decided, you know, I want more. Um, no offense to all you carbon dividend people, but I'm like, I think we're past the point of, you know, putting a price on carbon. I think we need change now. Like we, that could have been very useful a few decades ago, but it's just, my opinion is a little too late now. Um, but you know, props to you guys. It was fun while I was there. But yeah, that's me. Yeah, so uh, the reason I became involved in uh, being a climate activist because, uh, so I'm a rising sophomore college right now, but the high school I went to, they had, we had lead in our water fountains for about um, over a year. So I wanted to be involved to make sure, so that really brought the issue closer to home for me because I used to also think that um, climate change was, uh, well, I knew that it was happening and it wasn't really that real. So until it was more tangible through like letter of water fountains, that's made me realize the effects of pollution on a local level. And secondly, I'd say that um, after um, getting through that experience, I became involved in New Jersey Student Climate Advocates and we're working on a carbon fee and dividend bill. Um, and that was just, and to me that's important because we wanna make sure that not only is the solution impactful, but also that it's equitable and that um, um, it's more so tailored to New Jersey's needs. And I really appreciate being involved in the, on a political level as well as um, making sure that it's, um, it actually affects my, my home. Yeah, and I, I'll go very quickly since I think our time is up, but um, I was always very, very involved with social justice growing up. I think being just like who I am as like an Asian American female, I was very like aware of the inequities that existed, like even from, you know, the microaggressions that kind of characterize a lot of people's middle school experiences, especially at predominantly white institutions, um, to, you know, learning about like the greater systemic oppression that exists in this country. Um, so basically from there, I, it's kind of like what we've been talking about this entire time. Like I, I realized how inseparable climate justice is from all of those movements um, and from, you know, racial justice, from gender justice, honestly. Um, and so, yeah, I looked to organizations like NJSEA um, because I wanted to be on the front lines kind of fighting it through policy um, and, you know, affect legislation. And that's like where I, I saw like a lot of change being made, especially at the high level. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I can add a little bit about mine. So I used to live in North Carolina and we had like, we had a pond in our neighborhood and then our mayor at the time who was pretty conservative was trying to build over the pond so um me and some neighbors and then some adults started this movement to try to get the pond kept as it was and not build into a hotel and then that experience sort of showed me how influential students can be and young people can be in changing the policies and you know although we can't go out and be senators, representatives, presidents yet, but we still have the opportunity to affect policy through our actions. So climate striking, you know, going to protests, signing up for campaigns and everything that really started off those opportunities for me. And I had been passionate about a lot of issues before that, but I think that experience really helped me move into climate activism. So um, unless someone has a really short question, we should be done, but on the slide, um, we have all the join links for the organizations for climate change that we're in. So if anyone's interested in joining, just sign up there. And then if anyone has a quick question to ask, you can do that.
Uh, are you guys doing questions? I actually have a very like um, quick question. Um, do you guys feel like you're actually making a difference? Um, I'm not saying this to judge or anything, but like, you know how big this issue is. So do you really feel like you're actually making a contribute for this? I mean, I can go. Um, I mean, I think we have to recognize that all change has to start somewhere. Um, and even if it's just, you know, working in your local community to set up a composter in your school or something, if every single student does that across the nation, you know, that makes a huge difference. Um, so yeah, I think unless anyone else wants to add on. That's, that's kind of how I do it. Yeah, I mean, I feel that way a lot. I feel that I'm not doing anything. Um, and I feel that like, like all my efforts are kind of useless, but then I, I think back to, um, the recent primary elections and how Marie Newman won in March and how Jamal Bowman just won and how so many progressive champions across the country won. And I think, you know, we are making a difference. Um, this is, you know, this is going to be our future. And I think, um, especially with, with the Greta Thunberg climate strikes, like people are, are seeing the media coverage of the climate crisis has changed so much in the past two years. Um, and like, this is not just about like me, like me personally, if, if it was just me, like I would not have done anything, but it's the fact that like we are, like so many people are joining together and so many people are building this movement. And I think that um, is what's really gonna make change. So, um, you know, I guess I am making a difference. I really hope I am. Yeah, I mean, I was gonna say it's the same thing like Audrey was saying with Greta Thunberg. I mean, she started out for a few months, it was just her by herself striking every single Friday. And then eventually that makes an impact on other people. And, you know, it just spreads out from there. Like you may have two person, two people the next day and then 10 people. And then now we have literal like millions of people going out and marching to try to get people to pass progressive climate policy. So yeah, I do think the work that we do makes a difference. And then um, we had one question about carbon offsets. So um, if anyone wants to answer that, you can do so. Could you clarify exactly what you mean by carbon offsets? Um, yeah, I just like, I hope you can hear me. Um, like we, I heard about like you, like say like you were like taking a plane somewhere, like buying back the like emissions that you like spent on that plane and like it goes to like a farmer is like planting something. So I was, I'm not that knowledgeable about it. I was just wondering if like your movements did anything about that or like if that's like impactful for the climate movement, so. Yeah, actually, I guess I can speak on this. New Jersey Student Climate Advocates, uh, right now, primarily what we're doing is pushing a policy through um, in the New Jersey legislature that's called carbon cashback. Um, so it, it has a pretty similar philosophy to that, which is that we want to just put a fee on carbon um, and then that money will go back to households. It'll go into uh, like clean energy infrastructure, into coastal resiliency, into clean jobs and and green, just like green energy and making New Jersey kind of a leader in the green economy. Um, so yeah, that's, that's like a, a big thing that we're hoping to do. I do think that something like that would be effective um, in the long term. Um, I'm not sure if that's enough, but I think for the time being, I think greenhouse gas emissions are a huge problem that we need to be fixing somehow. Um, and yeah, I think policy is a good way to do that, at least in the short run. I mean, I'll build on that. Um, you know, I think it, it's, like I said before, I think it's huge that, like, if we can provide people with an incentive to stop, um, you know, to reduce their own um, carbon emissions, it would have been, it would be huge. Um, and it, it'll honestly make people much, much happier going into the whole green energy thing um, for the people that, like, don't care. I don't know why you wouldn't care, but there are people like that who don't care. Um, sad. Um, but, you know, I feel like right now we kind of reached a point where it's it's too late to wait around for incremental change like when i was with the new Jersey student climate advocates you know you guys were talking about you know um what, what's gonna happen in 10 years and 20 years and 30 years we're gonna reach these targets and I'm like everyone talks about you know there was a study done where i think it's like 80 percent of carbon emissions by 2050 but like that's that's too late like um we need to you know get to 100 percent clean renewable energy by 2030 if we if we really want to stop this 
we really want to, you know, mitigate these impacts because, you know, climate impacts are already here. Um, and it's, it's, in my opinion, it's, um, it's too late to wait any longer. It's too late to try and, you know, implement policies that rely on, you know, people actually caring. Um, I honestly, I don't think people care enough to actually make the change that they need on their own. They need a little push from the government. They need, we need an actual plan that's going to, you know, highlight how are we going to transition our economy um, to 100% clean renewable energy? How are we going to transition from fossil fuels to clean energy? How are we going to give workers jobs? How are we going to invest in communities? Like, how are we going to do that? Um, not just like, oh, we're just going to, you know, give money. Um, you know, we're going to take money from people if they don't do this um, because there are rich people who are literally just going to be fine with it. They're just going to keep paying the stupid taxes and keep, um, you know, and keep, and keep admitting, like we have to hold um, the rich people accountable, we have to hold the corporations accountable. Um, you know, honestly, I just don't think it's enough. Um, but yeah, if we are low on time, we can move on. Yeah, I mean, Harmony, if we have like a second. Um, yeah, I definitely agree with Audrey there. Um, it's definitely a struggle. It's sort of like what I was talking about when I was like discussing like the difference between working within the system and working to change the system. Um, I guess I kind of fear that if we re rely only on these movements to absolutely tear down the system, which, you know, in the long run might actually be the correct solution. Um, I worry that like in the short run, nothing is going to get done, um, which is kind of, kind of why I split my time between both. Yeah, I don't know, Jens, do you want to add anything to that? Uh, I think you guys mostly hit the, the key points there. Um, I guess to answer, I guess, the initial question, though, on carbon offsets. So um, some examples of that, I think I'm, I'm not too, too familiar with, but um, some other examples are like carbon sequestration technologies, uh, forest capture, agriculture um, capture, I think is the biggest one. Um, I'd say it's mostly, from my understanding, my, my limited understanding, it's mostly similar, similar to a cap and trade system. But I don't remember who specifically mentioned it, but I would say that um, it's, it's a start. Um, Definitely, the I don't believe in a one-size-fits-all policy. I think that there has to be a lot of solutions to the climate crisis. So I think that's a that's definitely a start there. And I guess to the point on um, whether we need like large change versus incremental change, I think that those two can definitely go hand in hand. So to make sure that the change happens not only on a smaller scale is definitely a starting point for change on a larger scale. And while I do agree that the climate crisis is immediate, um, it's better to be, I, I, in my opinion, it's good to have change now as soon as possible than it is to have um, change never. So the slowest change I think are, so I, I'd say that like, it's, it's good to, it's great to be ambitious. Um, and I definitely, if, if all those ambitious projects can pass, I would definitely be in support of them. But in realistically in our political climate, I do think that um, we have to um, sometimes take some incremental steps and everything counts. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna say some more piece and I think we're gonna be done. Um, but you know, I just, um, I feel like we're actually, you know, we have equal opportunity of, of passing both like a carbon, carbon fee and dividend and, um, you know, the Green New Deal. Like we've had so many progressive victories in the past few months and recently um, last week um, in the Kentucky and New York primary that I think we actually have a fighting chance um, if we can get all these new, awesome New Jersey progressives elected um, this Tuesday, which if you haven't, you know, helped out with their campaigns yet, please do. Um, we need to, um, you know, I think if we can get them all elected, we have a shot at, at winning the Green New Deal. Um, we have just as much of a shot at getting the Green New Deal as we do at, at having um, a carbon fee dividend. Um, but I won't rant on anymore. Um, Harmony, Zoom unfortunately crashed. Um, so I am just, I don't know if she had anything else to say, um, but I think we're over our allotted time here. So I'm just gonna finish it off um, if anyone any of the other presenters have anything that they wanted to share, feel free. Um, but if not, I think we're just gonna close it off now. Um, yeah, I guess I just wanted to say like, thank you so much, all of you for coming. Um, climate change is clearly an issue that um, all of us who are speaking are very passionate about. Um, and just by like showing up and, um, you know, wanting to learn, uh, you've done your part today. So, yeah. Yes, thank you all for coming. I appreciate it, you are awesome. Thank you so much. All right. Get out there, guys. Make some change. We got this. All right.
I think you guys are good to go. Thank you guys so much. Thanks so much for having us. All right. Thank you for the opportunity. It's great to talk. Of course.